We're just two guys with one mission, and we've chosen to accept it for some reason. It's time to tell them what we mean, what we say. Keep this upbeat for now. Yeah, let's go. Let's go in full force. Yeah, we just watched the 1978 exploitation <laughs> film. I spit on your grave. And oh then we'll, yeah. Oh god. Oh god. Why did we watch this again? Because it was on the list. Okay. So Steve and I have actually seen this before. Yeah. Maybe about 20 years ago. Yeah, about that. It was and horrendous back then. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's literally nothing changed. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really fucking horrible. It's a really, really brutal movie. Yeah, but I, I, I it's, think it's well made. To a point, it's well made. Yeah, it's just there are certain aspects about it that basically accentuate all the horrible things that occur in the movie. For those who are uninitiated, yeah, let's I spin go through the massive plot that there is. <laughs> I spin no grave is a 1978 rape revenge film starring. Uh, I would say the quintessential rape revenge movie. Yeah, I would, I would, I would, this is the first one that I would think of if you mention a rape revenge. Yeah, film. No, likewise. No. Yeah. Even though it's probably... It's definitely not the first one. No. Chronologically. It's most certainly not the last one either. No. <laughs> a young woman who's a working... Yeah, working on her first novel, goes to the countryside to work on her latest novel. She catches the eye of uh, some local hicks. Yeah. That's where we settled on. Hicks, were, hicks slash reprobates. Um, reprobates is a far better word. Thanks. Who proceed to assault her... Continuously. Continuously. And then after they think she's... They try to leave her for dead. Yeah. And after that, she exacts her revenge yeah. upon them. And that's the plot of the movie. Yes. Now, there are certain things that would put this... The whole thing is bleak and depressing. Very. And these is extenuated... Uh, look, this is... Uh, extenuated? Ex no, that's not the word. This Accelerated. Is, I'm pretty sure accentuated is what you Accentuated, mean. yeah. This is extenuated. <laughs> extenuated. I can't say it. Say it for me. Accentuated. Accentuated by... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is accentuated by the fact that the film has no musical score. Yeah, which is creepy which and unnerving. Basically means that when nothing's happening, you basically just have ambient sounds of, like, the countryside or cars mm -hmm. or outboard motors or the way that people communicate with each other. Yeah. This also means there's long stretches where there's nothing really happening and it's just dead quiet. Yeah. There's the actual sexual assault is Ugh. 30 minutes long. So it's a third <sighs> of the movie. Yeah. And then it gets into some... Towards the end of the movie, there's some interesting power dynamic flips. Yeah. But... I'm still not sure how intentional they are. Yeah, this is the this is the thing. It also because it's clearly made for almost no money. Yeah, it's it feels really cheap. There's no soundtrack. It's unbelievably brutal. Like for yeah. thirty minutes, the only sound is basically uh, grunts and screams. Yeah, and it's just an incredibly hard watch. And like I said before, I don't know how PC this is to say, but her because her physique because she's so skinny. Yeah. It, she accentuates yeah. the brutality of the rape because she's, she's, she's very she's, young. she's almost got a childlike figure. Yeah. Which just makes it even worse. She's just so weak and so powerless. I mean, Camille Keaton has a very like childlike face yeah. also. I don't know how intentional this was. I presume... But the thing is... I is, imagine she was the actress they could get for the money that would do what is necessary for this film. I actually think she's pretty good in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially kind of post-attack. Um, like and in fact, I'd say that all all the actors are pretty good, except the guy who plays the the the, the slow witted Martin, boy, Matt, Michael, whatever his name is, Martin? Matthew. Matthew. Yeah, the slow witted person is kind of. It's kind of a little bit cheese ball. Yeah, but it's also doy. Yeah, it's it's kind of thing, but it's not overdone. I don't think. No, I think, I think if you did take him out of the outfit with the big glasses and the and the kind. What of, was that other one we had where the, it had the, 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 the with the little sailor hat kind of thing? 
I think it wouldn't have been too bad. But because you put those two like affectations on him, I think that makes it worse. Yeah. I think his actual behaviour and his mannerisms aren't too bad. They're not too bad, but he's definitely a the weak... cartoonish. He's definitely like, the weak link in terms yeah, of the acting. Like, yeah, I, I, mean, the, I mean, the main attacker guy is actually super genuinely creepy as fuck. Yeah. And, but know. he also... He exudes his character. Yes. Like, this is... Uh, this is Like, like Hess does. Yeah, I totally believe that, mm. they, like, that this is the person he's supposed to be playing. I, I have no idea if he did anything else. Yeah. I mean, the two other hicks you don't really get. I don't know, they don't come into it enough that you get very much of an impression of kind of like, was that a good performance or a bad performance? They're not really in it enough. No, they're very they're like, just kind of whooping and Well, there's one and, that's with the with the mad eyebrows. Yeah. I guess he's just supposed to be like the psychopath of the, I guess, of the yeah. group. Like, and also there's the uh, there's a throwaway line uh, towards the end about how they don't have jobs. Yeah. And they're they basically just, just, just hang around. And they just hang around the gas station. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like, uh, and it, so... I guess we don't really learn much about... We don't learn a lot about their characters. No. I guess we don't know a lot about Camille Keaton's character. Also. No, I mean, she's, I a mean bit, she's a bit stuffy, she's a bit uptight. She's a writer away in the countryside to write her novel. Yeah, I mean, but at, at the beginning she's kind of a bit really. bubbly and very chatty. And then when she starts to exact her revenge, it kind of releases this very uh, cold and calculated yeah. version of, yeah. of herself. Yeah, she took. Yeah, but well, also once the attack has happened. She's complete ice queen, and you know she's all about tea scene of her bee. Yeah, but also, you only saw this once before, right? Yes, with me, I believe so. So I, I saw it with you. That's the only time I've ever seen mm. it. I remember the revenge being longer. Yeah, me too. Now that's why I checked when it when it started. That's why I checked the time code on it because it was just kind of. I don't remember this one getting this far into it. We must have ages to go. And then I looked in, and she's like, "That's." 20 minutes to go yeah 20-25 minutes to go by the time the, the revenge bit actually happens it's just like huh I don't remember that being the case and it's all over very very quickly yeah I mean you kind of it's, it's definitely it's a little too sadistic in that way definitely by the time that she's like stalking the, the guys and like finding out about them and like working out their, their weaknesses yeah. and working out what kind of like you are 100% on her side of, like, going, yeah, fuck these guys up. They, oh, absolutely, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that could have been, you know, you but, could have just had the assault last five minutes at the start of the movie and the the remaining hour and 35 minutes be the revenge. You yeah, would, I think that would be... be completely on her side. But. And I think that would, yeah, it would be way more balanced. It's just that it's a kind of... Sadistic. In that yeah, it takes, it's like really it takes too long to get to it. I think we're also going to find that with Last House on the Left and that the actual, you know, the redemption aspects of it really don't come until really late. Yeah, before. yeah. Well, I kind of remember that from... <coughs> yeah, I mean, that's how something we've seen about a billion times at this point, so... I'm not sure how many times I've seen... I've seen it quite a few. Maybe three or four times I've seen Last House on the Left. Well, I've seen it a few more than that. Um, it's a good film. Oh, well, we'll see when we watch it again. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> we're all very different people right now. <laughs> but, I mean, there were certain things that were good about this film. Like you are saying, the cinematography is really, really good. It's okay, like for how cheap it feels. The problem with yeah. the cinematography for Some me is that shots are really, really nice. Like you'll have the big wide shot of the, I want to say river, <laughs> or lake, or whatever it is that she's by, and like the boat coming in one side and stuff like that. So she's quite nicely done. It's for for the budget that it appears to be. It's punching above its weight. Yeah, I it's, agree. It's not the typical low budget crap that we've seen a lot of. Yeah, I mean, that's always the thing I never really understood about this movie in particular is that people, they deride it, they deride this one a lot. I think it's like often crops up on like worst of, really? worst of lists. Really? But, but then it's also, but it's for also me, it's one kind of, a massive reference. That... Yeah, it kind of exists in the same way as Cannibal Holocaust. It's like, it's like I don't like the content, but like it, it's one hell of a like really powerful movie. Yes. Like I'm not gonna forget this. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Once, yeah, once you've seen it, it's hard to shake. I mean, it's really, it's also, it's kind of <clears throat> difficult to work out whether it's a super feminist film or not. I guess that's up for debate. But um, yeah, I mean. But like I, I don't, say, I also don't think, think I'm in a position to be able to say whether no, it's a feminist film or not. No, and I think if I was, I would edge towards it. There's only 20, 25 minutes of this film that would be super feminist. The other hour and 20 is a woman being assaulted. <laughs> Very graphically. Well, 
graphically, not very graphically, continuously. Yeah, but it's for a long old time. Yeah, it's 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 really brutal. Yeah, and also I also remember the first time the revenges being far more brutal than they they were this time. The only one is the main. The okay, spoilers. Okay, what though? We're going to discuss that, are we? <laughs> this is for me like. I mean, it is a it is a quintessential scene. Yeah, but this for me of like her seduction of that guy is really. I really feel that there's something going on about flipping the power dynamic. Mm-hmm. So it, the power dynamic. A few times. So the power dynamic of the assault is basically brute force. Yeah, it's basically numbers. Big, and big, big a, strong man. Big strong man being able to like yeah. dominate this person. Yeah, and the. Lady using her uh, feminine wiles, her feminine wiles, and mine to get like a, and I really feel like that was the revenge that was like one hundred, like that was a satisfying revenge. Yeah, the guy get basically the, she seduces the guy. They end up having a bath together, and while she's jerking them off in the bath, he start, She grabs a knife and then cuts his cock off, and then he bleeds out. Yeah, S- like screaming Brilliant. the same way that she was screaming. Yeah, like in that. My only problem with that. That sequence is I don't think it needs the bit in the field first. So she she uses her feminine wiles to entice him into the car at the petrol station, like as it as if I to say like, th- oh actually I did love that, we should we should go and do it. Again. I think it does. And then bizarre well, it's just an extra flip flop that Yeah, but I think it's I think about it's, creating I think, but I think if she just seduced him and took him back to the house and then we're like, Ooh, we're gonna have a sexy bubble bath and then it just plays out that way. I just I just think it's a, a hat on a hat. Doing no, the bit I, where no. she pulls a gun on him no, I th- and I then d- he he persuades her that actually she loved it and I uh, dis- I disagree. I think it needs the scene in the field where she's um pointing a gun at him and makes him strip. So he gets this false sen- sense of security again. He but basically he, he goes already, from like going, Oh my god, she's gonna kill me to Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, but he already had that false sense of security from her getting him into the car with him saying, like, hey, I told you you'd love it around here. He's already so fucking cocksure, pardon the pun, he's already so cocksure that, like, oh, actually, afterwards she realised, like, she was super into it. Kick, kick. That they could have just gone back to the house at that point and she'd be like, like, oh, well, you know, put on some candles and we'll have a sexy bubble bath. Yeah. He would have, He would have still fallen for that. He would have still gone for that. I just think the bit with the gun and everything like that is just. A I'm bit not hat so on a hat. sure. I'm not so sure whether it's a hat or not. <laughs> I believe it is a hat. Or not. I'm sorry. I'm not so. I'm not so sure. I th- I think it need like, in order to, get her revenge because she obviously doesn't want to shoot him and then just like. No. Thing. She basically she wants to cut his cock off. Yeah. Rightly so. And. All rapists should have that done to him. Yes. <sighs> You heard it here, for, here first. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Okay, that's something. Dumb. That's something we can discuss. I've never seen the remake I of Ice Cream. Have you saw the remake of Ice Cream? I Grove. did. My imagining is that, that in no, absolutely no way would it be as brutal as that. No, no, it's very, it's hyper stylized. It was, it was in that period where all the remakes were coming out. So like Chainsaw Massacre, uh, Dawn of the Dead, all that kind of stuff. Right, and it's in that kind of slick. Early two thousands horror style, like Dimension Films, yeah, style, that kind of right. thing. I I remember so little about it because it was just trash. But I just don't understand how it spawned two sequels. No, I, like, well, the name more than anything, because you think about it, it's it's twenty years down the line. But they were in cinemas, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's twenty twenty five years down the line. A, the sensibility about horror films has changed, and B, you've got that massive horror boom at that point mostly because of all these remakes off of films that people have been like, oh, yeah, there was a classic film called Dawn of the Dead, right? Oh, I'm going to go and see this new Dawn of the Dead film made by genius Zack Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, oh Texas takes a chance on Massacre. Oh, I've never seen the original, but this looks all slick and hype. Uh, and, look, it's got know, a clown in it. It's got a dude with a mask. Good yeah. Slipknot. I, I love, fucking love Slipknot, me. I'm going to watch Texas Slipknot. Chainsaw Massacre. I've never seen the original, by the way. You've never seen Not it? me, obviously. The, oh, the person, the person the hypothetical first. person you're yes. pretending to be. The character I have adopted, sir. Oh, um, mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's... And the, and Spenny Grave, weirdly, was one of those that slipped into that category because of name. I just can't believe I think that. if they'd have re- done a remake slash soft reboot, whatever the fuck they call them these days, of Last House on the Left, people would have gone and seen that. The Water yeah, sure. Friday the 13th. Which sure, but I just don't... I don't understand, like, how someone watched that one and went, 
Yeah, I watch. A, I'll watch more of that. Yeah. <laughs> like because if they, re- I mean, we we found out when we were whilst uh, we were watching this that there was an official sequel made in last year. Yeah. That's 2019. Because haven't who knows when I'll get to editing all these things. <laughs> starring, the starring original the, lady. Yeah, starring Camille Keaton and the original and, director and the, with the original direct writer director. I mean, that's and crazy. I, I'm I'm. I'm vaguely tempted to watch it pure because she's like, "What the fuck? What's this about then?" Yeah, but I, I'm not. I'm not. It's not. Tommy Wilk doesn't want to revisit this world again. It's not the kind <laughs> of thing that I want to. Yeah. Is there a soundtrack to it? No, there's no sound. Oh, and to the remake. Uh, to the sequel. Re- to the se- re- sequel. Requel. Requel. Seaboot. Seaboot. You mean flippers? <laughs> yeah. So. I guess that this paved the way for a lot of things. Did you see that movie called Revenge, which is another rape revenge movie <laughs> that was supposed to be really good? You missed a word out of the title. Though. That I never watched because <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to watch this. Like, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I mean, like Game of Thrones was kind of rape revenge. I never watched that either. Oh, uh, you see, um, but not. I mean, to. I don't know if this counters or adds to the point that I made in a previous episode because I don't know what I said because I was real drunk. I'm not a big fan of fucking rape movies or rape in movies in general or TV shows well, or anything like that. I think like that's that. probably especially, the correct way to do things. No, no, Nobody but, wants to be a no, fan No, no, of but it. especially, like, like, on screen, like, some people do get that kind of vicarious thrill out of it. But when it, especially when it's graphically shown, it, it just raises hackles with me the same way that, like, the real animal deaths in most of the cannibal films that we watched had. It raises those same hackles of just like, uh, uh, yeah. no, I don't, I just don't fucking want to. You know, Irre- Irreversible is a fucking genius movie, but I cannot watch that film anymore. I mean, I saw it once and went, okay, I'm I, never watching this again. I unfortunately ended up watching it three times because I was showing it to other people. Oh god, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that and and that broke me because I used to be the kind of person that would watch these kind of films for fun. Not, not for the yeah, but, there was a but diff- like, that's a different like, thing because you know, it's about like, pushing your like pushing yeah, exactly. yourself, you know. And yeah, um, especially when you're a kid and you're into metal and fucking horror movies, and it's just like, what's the most extreme? Yeah, you know. But now I'm, we're all not. That. Yeah, I'm not yeah, that yeah. person anymore, unfortunately. I mean, I was the same. I think the last really extreme horror film I said, oh, I'm going to watch that was probably a Serbian film. Mm. Which I only watched that on the recommendation from a. Probably you actually. Oh, I wouldn't have recommended from somebody. Yeah, yeah. somebody recommended. It's just like it's the, it's the most fucked up thing you'll ever see. Cause it was around that time, like H the Killer and stuff like that. No, it was way after H the Killer. Was it? Yeah, way after. It was yeah. the only like H the Killer was. We like, watched it in the flat, if I remember rightly. No. Did we not? No. Yeah. You're talking about Salo. No, no, I definitely remember that. That was a piece of shit. Salo's a masterpiece, and you're wrong. Well, whatever. A Serbian film. We're about to have that same argument in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Watch out for the next episode. <laughs> the, um, no, a Serbian film was the last. Uh, so that's when I was like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna watch it, and I watched it. And I was like, kind of Not it. only is this kind of like, is it? I think it's a bad movie. Mm. I don't think any of the just uh, the violence is justified, and also the some of the more disgusting bits are like intending to be really brutal, or and and end up just being upset, like upsetting. Yeah. Or weirdly comedic yeah which I think is like the mark of a bad filmmaker yeah like you can do one or the other yeah like, yeah yeah absolutely, I yeah. I absolutely love that trauma style splat stick mm. kind of stuff but I also know that every director who's doing this kind of splat stick thing entirely intends to do that yeah yeah, yeah. they don't which like, kind of misses the mark they don't accidentally like, Gaspar Noe didn't accidentally <laughs> put a funny scene in his movie because he's a bad director. No. He doesn't do that. He accident- he purposely puts brutal scenes in it to make you go, what the fuck yeah, is this? Yeah, right. I, I guess you didn't see Climax. Is that the dance one? Yeah. No. Yeah, I thought Climax was pretty great. Uh, I didn't watch yeah. it. I've, I've only seen the review of it, and it just looks to me like I don't want to spend an hour and a half of my life watching that. I'd seen it in kind of real life. I've seen a lot of fucked up things on... Uh, well, the thing is with the climax is that it's not really... Stuff. It's not really... <laughs> it, it looks like a fucking trip. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an experience. It's not really... It's not really... Exactly. And this is the thing with uh, uh, his other movies. Like, I actually 
think his first movie is genuinely good. Is that Lahain? I No, I Stand Alone. Uh, it's uh, it's brutal, but I think it's a pretty good movie. Right. Irreversible is unbelievably brutal and depressing, and I never want to see it ever again. I would if it t- if I took that scene out. I would watch it again. What's the point? Precisely. <laughs> so, I'm not, um, so I'm not going to watch it again. I well, thought it would. I thought uh, if it didn't. I thought Enter the Void was was kind of a pretentious and a bad film. Okay. I, so I didn't watch Love, though my wife wrote to me yesterday saying that she did, and she said it was awful. <laughs> and so I was really hesitant about climax. But there was a couple of people who were really like going, "Yeah, no, actually, even if you turn it off after the dance sequence, mm-hmm. like, which is like 30, 40 minutes of the movie, you'll be pretty impressed." Right. But I stayed to the end, and it was like, "Well done, well done." Yeah, you made you made something like uh, outside of like it's like beyond cinema. Sure, almost. sure, sure. And it's and like, and in whilst, a, I, in whilst I appreciate the effort from what I know of it, whilst I appreciate the effort of doing that, it's not something I want to spend sure my time doing. But it's also like I think as a counterpoint to all these movies that are basically like theme park rides mm-hmm. in this. In, in, like your, your Marvel movies, your Star Wars. Yeah, but surely really that's like, just a fucking House of Horrors. Yes, right, but. I think the problem is, is it's quite upsetting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Whereas, whereas the Irishman is like a theme park ride as well. It's like a log flume, but without any of the big drops. <laughs> You're literally just going around in a circle on a fucking log. For three. Take that, Scorsese, you can't. <laughs> did you see the Irishman? <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, okay. I sat through it in one scene. Oh wow, that's impressive. No, no it's not. I impressive. took breaks. It was fucking boring. I took breaks. Yeah, no, I watched it all. It's a TV day. series. They should have broken it up into like three or four yeah. episodes. Like. Yeah. It's it's also it's yeah, it wouldn't have hurt it. They could have told the same story in this really slow pace, but to watch it as a movie, yeah, it's like, yeah, you make it a six part series, like you pad it out a little bit even more, even six part hour long series. That I, I, I would have been fine with that. Because like even something like like the stand, right? Like the mm-hmm. stand was what like was it four episodes or only two? Uh, four, I think. Was it? I don't remember. Someone yeah. leave something in the comments. I haven't seen the stand in. Years, yeah. I think it was four parts, right? I think so. And it was long, yeah. But it was good. I enjoyed the stand. Yeah. I mean, it's like the TV version of it. I can't believe that no one has edited those new movies together. Oh, I made one long movie in the style of the TV version. Yeah, that would would because the problem was I don't know if you saw the second one. No. The second one was fucking bullshit. (laughs) But the second one of the TV ones was bullshit as well. Yeah, it was. If you watch them in, in two separate ones, like, you know, chapter one, chapter two. Yeah, but I think it got through it a b- bit better because it was mixed up the timelines, but it was flashing forward and flashing back. And I think this made more sense, whereas in the first one, they never flash... Uh, they, they never flash forward. It's just, just the kids. And yeah. in the second one, they keep flashing back to the kids. Yeah. And it's like, just fucking get up with the fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clown you. Yeah, either, either do it to both or don't do it to either. Yeah. Anyway, if someone's smart, they'd edit it together as one thing, and they get rid of a lot of the side quest section in the middle that takes way too long and makes absolutely no sense of, of doing. Yeah. Who's that dude from that 70s show? Tougher Grace. He did the Phantom Edit. He should do this. He should Topher do Grace the did the Phantom Edit? Yeah. What? Uh, do you know what, what the Phantom Edit No, is? I don't. It's a uh, reworked version of Phantom Menace, where he Which? basically edits out all the shit. It's actually not that bad. And how long is the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Quarter of an hour. <laughs> it's just a Darth Maul fight at the end. <laughs> okay, so we got really, really off topic. <laughs> um, uh, there's an edited together Hobbit trilogy as well. Where somebody's all right. edited all three movies into one. Sh- Steve, should we score this? Yeah. What would you give it up for story, Steve? It's quite basic, isn't it? Mm. Two. One. Two. One. Two. Mm. Two. Two. It's not the most original, and there's nothing to it. Yeah, I think I'm going to go one higher than you, for the following reason. <laughs> because it's such... Because it's so bare bones, and because it is so iconic, mm. I think it deserves more than two points. <laughs> that's that's my logic. Okay. So I'm uh, giving would that it... Not, yeah, but would that not be under... Kind of creativity, though. Uh, I'm, the well, story, we're gonna we'll get to that. Because the story itself is is just bare bones. But that's the thing. But um, that's but, not what makes it iconic. No, but the story is essential to that. But I, I agree with you on the process of two. And if it wasn't such an iconic film, 
I would probably score it the same. But okay. I'm going to give it one extra point, but I'm going to be generous to this film. Okay. That's only because you know there's a category that's getting a zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, what would you give it for gore, Steve? Uh, yeah. There's there's only one bit of gore, really. I mean, do we? Hmm. I mean, the bruise makeup looks bad. Yes. It looks like somebody just drew some ash. But on like the face. when during the assault, like she looks pretty fucked fucked up. Yeah. But it's is not that really. As gore? It's not really gory. No. It's like, and really, the only gore bit is the bathtub. And even then, it's not. It looks pretty good. That one big bloop yeah. to start with. It's like, oh. It's pretty horrible. And when she's wiping it off the side of the bath, that actually looks pretty good. Yeah, and he's as just a, like. As a person who's around blood all the time, it actually looks pretty good, so. The axe in the back kind of doesn't really oh, that connect. Looks awful. No. Like, that looks uh, like an axe in a piece of wood. Yeah. Two? I'm probably going to go less. I'm probably going to give it a one for gore. Are you sure it's not iconic and you want to give it? <laughs> no, I'm giving it a one for the. You sold me on the bloop, the bathtub bloop. Yeah, the bathtub like, that bloop. Was the, that's, that's, like, that's really when all the, all the men are really oh. going. Yeah, I know what that because that's when you figure out what happened. Yeah, and she's like, uh, what? What? Oh, but it's not oh, a very oh, gory oh. movie, I, uh, no. I would say. No. So you give it a two, I give it yeah, a one. Yeah, I'll be generous. Okay, so this is going to be a point of contention. It's an yeah. iconic group. So, <laughs> <laughs> what would you give it for creativity? This is um, well. You see, now I think I would go higher. Uh, I would probably go at least three because I think because it's so bare bones. I think they're actually quite creative with it. The characters are different enough. They're not just a group of similar kind of guys. There's a very obvious leader. There's a very very obvious kind of runt of the litter kind of thing with the half idiot, as they call him. Yeah. But yeah, they do quite a lot with it. Much as, uh, much as I hate all the assault bits, they kind of the fact that they kind of spread them out. These all actually no. It's how it's how it's like really that. really so ha- it's, it's really really it's, this is you know it's drawn out. It's like yeah. she thinks she's got away, and then they can yeah. It's it's in. really it's creatively. I think that's good. I do not think the act itself is good. Okay, sure. So I would go to given that it, given that it's so bare bones, they make quite a lot with it. I actually think it deserves quite a lot of points for creativity here. The film I think is saved a lot by its acting. Mm-hmm. It would have been really easy to do a, a, a film like this with, and save even more money on bad actors. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've seen that already. Yes, and I think also compared to a lot of uh, these rape revenge movies, I've never seen anything as harrowing as this. No. And so I might go as high as a four. Oh, right. I might, yeah, I was going to say I might put it up to a three, actually, for those reasons. All right, so a three from you yeah. and a four from me. Sense. See, now there's a couple of bits to me that don't make any sense. As previously discussed, As previously discussed. the driving to the woods bit is a bit stupid to me. That said, I mean, the reason for the attack is that they're bored? No, the reason for the attack is they want to get the, the half-idiot um, oh, to lose his virginity. And, so, and he expresses yeah. an interest in her, so they kidnap her in order for that to happen. I and suppose, then when he yeah. um, is too uh, shy to um, to actually go through with it mm. they decide to they take it too far he, yeah they do it themselves yeah okay well it loses for the the bit that I don't like the driving to the woods with a gun bit right I don't think that makes sense okay again she's already she's got him in the car she could just take him home and like I say he's he's already under the idea that like it's on so it doesn't need that whole flip flop hat on a hat bit <laughs> Is it three or is it a four? Because actually, flat out reason of you raped me, I'm going to cut your cock off is the most logical thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's getting happened. For me, it's getting out of all these movies, this is getting a five. <laughs> really? This makes total sense. Right. Everything makes sense in this movie. I'm going to drop it one just for the. All right. So a four from you. Yeah. I think uh, so. Five from me. Yeah. Okay, and now this is the this is going to be a big discussion. <laughs> what are we going to give it for the music? Well, now. There was a bit where your phone went off and I liked the ringtone. <laughs> yeah. There was a bit where I plugged my phone into your computer and yeah. it made a sound. Bing, bing, bing. There was a bit when I got a text message. Sorry, that might be trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> you singing it, it might <laughs> be trademarked. Do, 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 do. Um, there was a... Big fat goose egg. <laughs> 
Okay, so it's a zero <laughs> from both of us. Yes, of course. I just feel like we need to say at this point the reason why we're making loads of jokes is because we just watched I Spit on Your Grave. It's pretty fucking traumatic. Yeah, it's like you gotta you gotta live your life. Yeah. All right, have you got any final thoughts while I total this up? Uh, no, well, I think getting on to, you know, would you recommend this? Weirdly, even though it's iconic and even though it's actually quite well made for what it is, I, I can't in any good conscience recommend anybody watch this because it's fucking harrowing and it's really disturbing. Unless that's your fucking bag and you haven't seen this. But I would assume if that kind of thing is your bag, you've seen this. It's one of those films that you probably... I don't it's, think... It's well known enough that if you were into this kind of, like, like genre of films and you want to see, you know, fucked up horror movies, you would have seen this already, surely to God. I mean, I don't know. I think we're also older. I don't, uh, I don't think, like... But we watched it when you were pretty young. Well, I was 20. Yeah. That seems pretty young now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying that's a 20-year-old now, nowadays. My... I wanted to see it because I knew it was banned. Yeah. When twenty years before. Yeah, twenty you, years before yeah, I was right. I, I was there, and so it was in my mind of like, and when you get interested in, especially like older movies. Yeah. Like you just like, oh yeah, I, I remember this, and also it was a quest to find it. Yes, it was. So it wasn't. It's like so there was. It was like a little bit. Yeah, and I suppose if you're uh, but like if you're twenty now, that the title is that other film to you. Is the remake. Yeah, and also... So maybe, yeah, go back and watch the original and, you know, just be aware. Yeah, I mean, I... Just I, be aware I, it's, not, I it's do, not the slick, well-produced... I don't want to know the kind of person who would like this... who would enjoy this movie. Mm. Like, I'm glad I've seen it. Yeah. But I would not... I could not, in good conscience, recommend it to anyone unless they were doing an essay... On uh, sexual violence in films, and I go, oh, have you seen? Yeah, I spit in your grave, and you they go, need, oh no, I yeah, haven't. I go, you would need to see this. You would need. To, I recommend seeing it to you t- for your essay. Yeah, and, we, and, and but in a weird turn around with some of the ones that we've had this kind of toing and froing on whether we recommend it. This is this is one where actually, if I was around somebody's house and they said. Oh, I haven't seen this. I'm going to watch this. I would actually say, "Now nah, you're all right." No, no, I don't want to I'm, see that. I'm, I'm going to go and pop for an hour and a half. <laughs> See hour, hour, hour and forty hour and minutes. minutes. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so so no, it's a thirty. For, so for a final score of thirty-four out of fifty. Fucking hell, really? Yeah, did quite well. God damn. Steve, would you recommend it? I literally just talked about. Say so yes or no. Yes or no. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> um, yes to the right people, no to everybody else. That's uh, a no from me. Yeah. Okay, we'll to see a, on the next... To a normal person, no. No. To anyone, I don't think I would recommend it. Unless yeah. you're an academic. Yeah. And and it's certainly not drunk around your house. No. Hey, let's take a horror movie on. Hey, let's no, put no, on no. the ice bit on your grave. But no. No, no, no. And don't prank people with it. That's not cool yeah. either. Don't put it in the romance section of your local video shop, should you work there, for instance. Okay, but... <laughs> First of all, that wasn't the romance section. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did put it in the rom-com section. I didn't put it in the rom-com section. Where did you put it? I put, you put it in, in the comedies. Por- I put it in the pornography section. Ah, right, okay. But I used to put a lot of stuff in the pornography section just... <laughs> um, just for laughs. Just to see if anyone would rent it. Yeah, Chipmunks 2, the squeak one. No, like Crash. <laughs> yeah. Crash rented really well once I put it in thing. I spit in the grave not so much. Yeah, I could check after Crash. Crash is a porno. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it looks like one of those like old nineties vivid video mm. things. Just yeah, right. Just slightly glossier. Yeah, like slightly glossier. <laughs> like, but I don't know if Howard Shore did the sc- <laughs> did any Gemma Jameson movies. <laughs> There's something to look up. Do you kids know who Jenna Jameson is? You should. She was um, very. She was a very popular young lady when um, when when I was a teenager, I guess. Yeah. Like, um, do you know who Pamela Anderson is? She she's, was not. She's porno- like a hot version of that. <laughs> she's <laughs> like a porno version of that. Yeah, she's like yeah. a porno version of that. Yeah. Do you enjoy the first five minutes of Barb Wire? Maybe watch some Jenna Jameson videos. They, have you ever? They would se- be for you. Have you ever seen the nostalgia critic talk about his bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Maybe you'll enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway. Oh, God, what am I doing with my life? I oh, know we're done. Okay. Smash the like button. 
Subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. All that, all that malarkey. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Oh, God, I've just realised what's next. Yeah! Fuck. See you next time. Bye. Bye.